One of the most beautiful hotels that I've ever visited with one mortifying and disgusting flaw. I'm going to tell you all about that in this full tour. So let's get into it. Welcome to Udaipur. If you'd like to know the exact rate that I paid for my stay or my next five videos in queue, please check out the description below. And if you're new here, hi there and welcome to the channel. My name is Kevin. The internet needs more honest content, plain and simple, and that's why I'm here. I make airline trip reports, high-end hotel reviews, and cruise ship tours as well. I self-fund all of my videos, and I don't alert any company that I'm coming because I want to have as normal of an experience as possible. Then I can give you nothing more than my own personal, honest, unbiased opinion. Truth is, I wish this wasn't true, but the thumbnail, the teaser, and the title of this video are not clickbait. Stick around and you're going to see something that will likely make your stomach turn, and is the very reason why I felt the need to revamp my scoring system, for only the second time ever. As with all of my videos in this India series, if you're new here, feel free to click the link above or in the description for my India playlist, which will have around 25 videos by year's end. And since this video is longer than normal, I promise I won't be talking the entire time. Okay, so I was picked up from Raffles by the Udai Villas car, and en route, I was asked if I wanted to arrive by water or by road. I couldn't say no to the boat transfer, so the driver called ahead and ensured that it was ready for me. Note that if you do go with the boat transfer, you'll be dropped off, and then the driver will continue by road to the hotel with your bags. Crossing the near pristine Lake Pachola, we pass by the city palace in Udaipur's old town, as well as the Taj Lake Palace, my review of which is linked above and below. Let's, let's not take into account the fact that the Taj Lake Palace was an actual palace for a moment. That said, I think Udai Villas is easily the most impressive of all of the hotels and resorts directly surrounding Lake Pachola, perhaps only outdone in scale by raffles down the road a bit. Arriving at the Welcome Pavilion is described as follows. Guests are ferried by golf cart to the main gates, whose large cusp arch has historically been used by Mewar craftsmen. Other Mewari features, such as large domes and cupolas, arrest the eye and define the Udai Villas skyline. Chatrice or ornamental pavilions dot the roofline as well. The effect of the exterior walls, now glowing in early morning light, is achieved with gutai, a traditional lime plastering technique that requires up to 18 months of preparation and is known to last centuries without any maintenance. I know quite a few hotels that could use that kind of durability. There are certain parts of this hotel that are really easy to get lost in. Now, that has two meanings, since it is a very unique layout, which some might find a bit complicated. But what I primarily mean is getting lost in the era, getting lost in the Mawari architecture. There's a sense of romance in these walls, which I personally think is unmatched in Udaipur. The Taj Lake Palace simply doesn't have the scale and grandeur and Raffles, as beautiful as it is, does not feel ingrained in the land as Udai Villas does. Udai Villas is as local as it is regal, as beautiful as it is bespoke. If I'm honest, there's really only been one other time that I felt such a way about a property, at the time that I was here at least. And that was at the Zanier Resort by San Ho in Vietnam, one of the very first videos that I ever published, before I found my voice, so to speak. 
a resort which was equally, if not even a bit more so, inspired by the local culture and customs. Of all of the small touches at this hotel, or any other luxury property in India, I do have to say that those rose petal showers truly do create a sense of arrival unlike any other. Just opened in 2002, surprisingly recent if you ask me, the property has just 87 rooms and suites spread across 40 acres of land, which was once part of the Maharana's hunting grounds. Nearly 40% of the hotel's grounds to this day are designated as a wildlife sanctuary. If you've been keeping up with my India series, you've probably heard this spiel a few times by now, since many of Udaipur's properties are very close to one another. The city of Udaipur, known as the City of Lakes, is in the arid state of Rajasthan, in the far northwest of India. Its small regional airport is around a 45-minute drive from the center. After a 20-minute boat ride across Lake Pachola, you'll arrive at the sprawling Udaivilas, on the west side of the lake. For future reference, my room is located right about here. As we explore the lobby area, let's begin to mention the titans in the industry who came together to design this property. The interiors were designed by Malaysian-based designer Jeffrey Wilkes, that name you may recognize from the Leela Palace Udaipur video that I put out recently. Of this space, he says, quote, A large dome with floral paintings on the gold leaf gives an arrival of royal importance. An eclectic approach to decor was most suitable. Applied decoration, like mirror inlay, was inspired by Udaipur's Lake Palace and City Palace. We also used deco-style furniture and other period pieces. The architect for the property was Nimish Patel of Abikram Architects, a renowned local firm known for their usage of traditional elements in modern structures. Of the Udai Villas, Patel said simply, we're building a palace that will respect and represent the continuity of Mawari tradition in all respects. As for my two cents, this is clearly a special property. I think it's rare these days when something that can feel 20 years old, and it does, also feels perfectly up to date. For the property, I cannot even begin to imagine what a modern version of this would look like. Even if it was renovated from top to bottom tomorrow, I'd expect and hope that much of the traditional touches and furnishings would remain the same. Moving now towards the guest areas, we pass the candle room. At night, the candles are all lit and reflected in the black glass mosaic ceiling, which in person was stunning, but on camera actually looks better during the day. As we begin to walk towards the two primary pools, we're going to pass through a series of corridors and gardens along the way, which brings me to my first big point of the video. Every bit of this property that is touched by the outdoors is absolutely stunning. The interior gardens and water features which we're walking through now are beautiful, 
But to me, where the property really shines are the rolling hills heading down towards Lake Pachola, as well as the two showstopper pools. Do you ever wonder why other content creators and I always ask for you to click that thumbs up button and subscribe? Well, there's two reasons. First, it's really easy to forget to do. We all forget to do it sometimes, myself included. Secondly, it truly does help the channel continue to grow by increasing engagement. So please, click it, subscribe, and share with friends and family. Comment if you'd like as well. If you'd like to support me even further, my Patreon is linked in the description below. Thanks very much in advance. As we check out the first pool, have a think about who you might think was the designer for all of these outdoor spaces. This pool that you see now is one of the semi-private pools which connect a handful of rooms in two areas of the resort. So, as we look around, want to learn two fun facts about peacocks? It's quite possible that the rest of the world knew this already, but I certainly did not. First, as beautiful as they are, well, as beautiful as the males are at least, they are truly the most annoying sounding birds that I've ever encountered. You know those mid-century cartoons with the squeezable air horn in the cars? That is precisely what they sound like. Almost makes me miss the sound of roosters. Second thing, I swear I had no idea they flew. I almost had a minor heart attack filming this clip with a pair of them flying right over my head, finding their chosen perch. Now onto the second pool. Take a look at those tiles. Decided on who the designer is yet? Yep, once again Bill Bensley. Bensley notes that there is truly nothing meant to be bling on the property, and stresses that no matter how opulent it is, it was meant to look as if it's always been here. An objective well achieved, I'd say. On the design, he said, quote, In our drawings, we borrowed the traditional Mughal miniaturized style of painting in our concept drawings. Using false flat perspectives, a riot of colors accentuated by some 300 sheets of gilt, and fanciful ancient symbols for trees and human figures. We came up with 45 meters of drawings, and most of our ideas were adopted. One other thing that Bensley noted that I had no idea about while I was there is, quote, there's a labyrinth of underground service tunnels allowing staff and buggies to whiz fresh and ever so hot meals to rooms. Guests are left to walk undisturbed at ground level, without the constant passing of laundry, engineering, room service, and guest buggies. And here's part of those beautiful rolling hills that I was talking about. So, Oberoi. It's a big name in the game, and I featured it twice on the channel previously. If you'd like a deeper dive into the history of the brand, known widely currently as the best hotel brand on earth, please take a look at my video from their Mumbai hotel. Briefly, the company began in 1934 in the far north of India in Shimla, where Mr. M. S. Oberoi pioneered the idea of Indian luxury hospitality by opening his first hotel. To this day, throughout their 19 hotel properties, they practice two guiding principles, the Dharma, simply the concept of guest as God, and more specifically, Oberoi's, the guest is everything meant to put the guest above all else, profit included. We'll see about that. One thing that I do honestly respect greatly about the brand, because I've seen the fruits of its labor in action, is the Oberoi Center of Learning and Development, which was established in New Delhi in 1966. To this day, the center graduates around 100 students every year, and this is one of the core reasons why Oberoi's service is meant to be so consistent. I'll go into more detail about the center in my upcoming Amarvillas video. 
As we begin to head to my room for this day, that brings me to my second point. There is no question that service is at the very core of everything that Oberoi does. Some call it cold in style. Personally, I like it. It's anticipatory, low touch, but high value. You're never meant to see any of the magic that's happening. If you needed something, it was likely already provided before you realized that you needed it. But at this property, while I was there, there did seem to be a disconnect between that great customer service and just how hands-on management needed to be in order to execute it, which is surely the root cause of the problem that I've been alluding to, which we'll see in my room. For my stay, I had a premier room connected to one of the semi-private pools that I showed you earlier. As we look around, let me just note that off the bat, it is a bit of a compact room. Considering it's a newer property, I would have expected them to put a bit more thought into the size and layout, especially considering the room sizes that were common in the early 2000s. That said, I'll let you explore, and towards the end, I'll come back with my three favorite and least favorite things about the room.
Okay, so as always for me, it's all about the details, big and small. Today we're going to start with my three favorites. And first is perhaps, obviously, this pool. It's just honestly one of the most refreshing things you could possibly see on a 105 degree day. And I'd argue that it's almost nicer to have this semi-private pool instead of a private one, since the scale here is pretty massive for just a handful of rooms sharing it. My second point is the structure of the rooms and how they're laid out along the open air hallways. There's just something very transportive about the corridors. And because there are windows along the corridors, with privacy fixtures of course, in the living space and the bathroom, it means that you get natural light at both ends of the room. Lastly, I like the quirky nature of the room's decor. Some might say that it's a mix of a palette of colors and textures that don't really seem like they should be existing together. But here, I think it adds to the sense of charm. Now on to three details that I'm not a fan of. First, the hotel does not levy a service charge. We get it. There's no need to put multiple reminders in the room, including, oddly enough, in the toilet room. Second, very small thing, but that welcome plate just looks sad and out of place. Nothing more to it. Lastly, here's the doozy. Let me set this up for you, and I'm working off of the timestamps from the original photos and videos that I took. I got back to my room at 8.33 p.m. At 8.42, while I was arranging my bed the way that I like it, I noticed a stain on the sheet. It was unexpected, but not a huge deal. I took a photo of it because, well, I take photos of absolutely everything. I'll point out part of this. In, in this original clip, can you see how the bed kind of has small hills and valleys in it? It's a bit lumpy. Keep that in mind. 10.16 p.m. Time for bed. I was plugging my phone in on the opposite side of the bed that I sleep on, and I noticed another stain on the sheet at the upper corner of the bed. Then I touched it, and I noticed that it was under the sheet. Brace yourself. Let me make this perfectly clear. This is exactly how the bed was. There was a single thin sheet over this mismatch of mattresses and folded and utterly disgusting mattress toppers. I was equally shocked at how unbelievably dirty these are and actually pissed at myself for not having checked sooner in the day. Something that I would normally check in detail when I arrived, but hey, it's an Oberoi. I called and demanded, not a word I usually use in a situation like this, demanded that the duty manager get to my room immediately. I simply covered the bed back up, and when he came in, I revealed it again. If there's one thing that I know for sure, it's that he was genuinely mortified, absolutely speechless. Trying to explain myself as if that was necessary, I noted that the reason that I didn't check the bed until now, so late, was because I had had exceptional experiences at some of their other properties. And as he was taking photos of the bed, he froze, looked at me, and said, You're a repeat guest? I replied yes, and he said in the most genuine tone possible, quote, I assure you, we will make this up to you, but in this very moment, how can I make this okay for you right now? I asked him to have it fixed as quickly as possible since I wanted to get up for sunrise. Done, he said. He left. In reality, it took 45 minutes to remake my bed, and I can pretty likely tell you why. My guess? They couldn't find any clean mattress toppers. In the end, the bed was remade with three very thin mattress toppers, a mattress protection layer, and a fitted sheet. And in the clip here, you can see it's no longer lumpy. As we take a look at the bar and then head down to Odaya Mahal, let me explain why this one hit differently for me and why it was part of the reason that led me to change my scoring method. I mean, come on. There was nothing between these mattress toppers and the bottom sheet, the single sheet. The housekeeping staff sees this every day. They have surely reported it up the chain previously. If these are this bad in my room, this mismatched and this old, I think it's fair to assume that every single bed in this hotel is the same, or was the same. This also quite perfectly explains why their beds are always lumpy in photos that you see of them. Because there's an assortment of crap underneath the sheets. Can we just take a step back for a moment and again remember that this is the world's best hotel brand. 
Many would argue that this is one of the, if not the flagship property in their portfolio of 19. I'll make one other thing clear. I don't for a second blame housekeeping, the, the housekeeping staff at least. The attention to detail that the service staff in this hotel showed was second to none. This was either a housekeeping management problem or a budget problem or a combination of both. I was here in May of 2023. When I started this channel during COVID, it was critical that I published as fast as I possibly could since things were changing so rapidly. Now though, now that things are different and they should be the same experience from today to next year, I prefer that my videos are on a three to six month delay for a variety of reasons. Here's my thought. There's no way on earth that all of that betting hasn't already been changed. Honestly, there, there, there can't be any way that it hasn't been changed. And I want to present the score of my experience alongside the score of what I think the property is likely capable of doing without the insane circumstances that I saw. The next morning, I was called early in the morning by, I believe, the front desk manager. I'll be honest, on this day, I spoke to a lot of managers, so I might get a couple of the titles wrong. She was profusely apologizing and was offering a variety of service recovery options. The first being to extend my stay on the house. Due to my itinerary, that wasn't possible, and I was honestly trying to downplay it at this point. Clearly, they got my message. I don't need stuff, but I'm glad that they offered. She persisted, though, and eventually I agreed to have a spa treatment on the house. Note that when I checked out, unbeknownst to me, as in it was done after I left, and I was informed of it as we walked to the buggy after checkout, they took 25% off of the room rate as well. Now we're in Uday Mahal, which is their fine dining restaurant. Note that you can order from this menu at the other restaurant as well, which I'll show you in a bit. As dusk began to set in, the property took on a completely different energy. There are benches throughout the property, and you'd be lucky to find one that was empty, even though it was low season. There was just a real sense of everyone just enjoying being outside and the atmosphere with live music in the background. At the lakefront is Chandi, the alfresco dining, terrace, and bar. Here we have the outdoor seating area of Surya Mahal, the all-day dining venue. The nightly cultural show would take place just adjacently while you're having dinner, which I think is a very nice solution instead of offering dinner and the show separately. The food and service here was absolutely exceptional. The atmosphere was casual and lively, but the service was just very Oberoi and formal, but in a very charismatic way. And that brings me to my third big point of the video, the food. Honestly, Oberoi does food really, really well. It's rarely fussy, 
but it's always flavorful and exactly as described. I particularly like that the chefs almost always come out and check on you personally after you have your meal. Also part of the food experience being so good here is due to the Oberoi's breakfast, which is undoubtedly my favorite hotel brand breakfast on earth. We'll see that in a little bit. Keep in mind that this was before the bed incident, but when I came back to my room, after dinner, there was a beautiful small frame tapestry waiting on the coffee table. Time for breakfast. Our second to last stop for this video. While we take a look around, I'll note that multiple managers came up to me while I was here to offer their apologies, including the front desk manager that I'd spoken to earlier, as well as the housekeeping manager, who, well, frankly, I can't imagine is still there. Breakfast is a small, well-curated buffet, as well as a full a la carte menu. Last up, we have the spa and fitness center. The spa facilities were very well outfitted and the massage was very good, if not a little bit textbook. All right, so let me explain the new scoring system. The first slide that you'll see will be the same format score as always. This is the property score. This will be based on everything as it was meant to be. What does that mean? Well, let's say that breakfast was horrible because it was super limited and the ingredients used were not top quality. Well, those were choices that the hotel made. So points for that would be deducted from the main score. Now, let's say that breakfast was great, except for the fact that you found, I don't know, a hairball in your omelet. That clearly was not how it was meant to be. So that will be a penalty. The concept came to me recently when I was in Mexico. I was at a resort, which will remain nameless for now, but let's just say it was a very highly regarded resort. Well, literally half of the entire property, including two of the three pools, Three of the five restaurants and the vast majority of the resort grounds were closed. And frankly, the part of the resort that was open was not looking too great. My reservation was able to be canceled up to 72 hours in advance. The email saying that half the property would be closed was sent just 48 hours before arrival. So in this case, obviously I had a really crap experience, but also quite obviously, I'm sure it's fully open again, especially by the time that video will come out. Hence the property score and the penalty concept. I'll refine it over time and I'm happy to hear any feedback about it. Penalties will range depending on how much I think it impacted my stay. I'll also note that service recovery, no matter how good or bad, will be reflected in the original service score only and will not negate the penalty. For properties where no penalty is necessary, there will just be the original format. I just want to be able to give people that are researching this hotel a good idea of what they might be able to expect on their stay. I hope this all makes sense. Anyway, back to Udai Villas. So it is an incredible property. And honestly, I would recommend it only because I truly cannot imagine that the beds are still in the same state as during my stay. So as odd as it may sound at this point, the Udai Villas is actually my favorite resort in Udaipur. The bed thing aside, the grounds are incredible. 
The atmosphere is otherworldly, and it is truly an escape just a stone's throw away from the City of Lakes. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video today and found it useful. If you did, please be sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe for much more India content coming throughout November. I'll see you next time on my Indigo flight from Udaipur to Jaipur. Oh, and thanks for watching until the end.